Well, hello, everyone, and welcome. And thank you so much for joining us. This is Terry Roberts with DMAI, Destination Marketing Association International. And we are the trade association for convention and visitors bureaus. And we're thrilled to have you join us for our November webinar, New Ideas for Bringing Your Meeting Back to a Familiar Location. And um, more thrilled than that to introduce um, our panelists. First, before I begin, I would, though, like to introduce Josie Wilson. She is with eProDirect, our sponsor for today. And Josie will be talking to us a little bit at the end of our webinar. But we are very excited about having Kathy Smith, CMP, and Meetings Director for AANEN. And Kathy just celebrated, I saw some very cool pictures online, her 27 years with AANEN in October. And uh, she is in charge of planning the annual meeting and facilities planning for the organization. Um, but she has a countdown going. She was telling us she has an advent calendar of sorts up in her office as she is um, has an impending, impending retirement going. So Kathy, I know that you're getting ready to retire and tell everyone what uh, today's advent note said. Uh, it's a wonderful sign. It says, um, I don't have to do it. I don't want to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm retired. I think <laughs> it'll be my new mantra. <laughs> That is great, but we are so glad that you have a swan song, and that is to join us today um, willingly and wantingly uh, with your good friend, Jeff Hewitt, who's the Vice President um, of Business Development for Visit Savannah, our everyone's good friend. And uh, Jeff um, is in charge of a very fine team of sales professionals there in Visit Savannah. He has over 25 years of hospitality experience and has been on all sides of this business with a nice Marriott career and also representing the destination of Charlotte and Tampa Bay in his history. So Jeff, thank you also for joining Kathy and joining myself today as we talk about uh, keeping meetings fresh and uh, really appreciate your participation, Jeff, and um, representing our industry so well. Happy to be here. Great. So um, I would like to start our discussion by really kind of talking about how we got the idea of our topic. And we were on a podcast with Annette Gregg, who is with Client Experiences. And Annette was talking about how the longer you plan meetings in the same destination or the longer you plan meetings in general, the more you think you know about the destination or um, what might be available. So you sort of have these preconceived notions about how you're going to do things, and you might run the risk of actually recycling um, the ones, the ideas that you're most comfortable with and run the risk of becoming stale. So we thought it was a great idea to tee up a discussion on how to best know what's new in a destination, how to really find out what is unique and maybe off the beaten path, how to continue to not have to recreate the wheel every time and to borrow brilliance from some of your fellow planners how to theme um, the event uh, of your meeting uh, around the destination's offerings, and then who are the right people um, to know in every destination to make it all come together. So that's where we're headed during this discussion. And I would like to start, before we really dive into the meat of the discussion, by asking Kathy, you know, currently, Kathy, what are you hearing from meeting attendees? What is really important in attracting them to return year after year? What kind of experiences do you think they're looking for? I think they're looking for meetings that help them do their job better, uh, to continue to help them um, be successful. Uh, my members are physicians and allied health professionals. And they are experiencing uh, major cuts in the reimbursements that they receive for what they do. So they've got to be very cognizant of where their dollars are spent. So they look carefully at what meetings they go to and what gives them 
literally the biggest bang for the buck. Mm -hmm. Who gets them to meet and see and know the people they want to meet and network with? Who gets them to the sessions that provide them with the information to do their jobs better and to provide better patient care? And also, I have to say, the destination has a big impact. Do they want to go there? Is it on on a, a list that they have seen and have not been able to be at the destination, or is it one that they've had such a good experience at that they know they want to go back? That's great. And I think when we were talking earlier, too, you mentioned you know, some things that you, you found in Savannah, you know, that kind of the walkability of the city. What plays into what makes the destination attractive? Um, the compact nature of Savannah was perfect for us. Number one, we are returning. We did return. Um, my swan song literally was in Savannah. Mm -hmm. um, we did return after 10 years, and they knew that it was a city that was charming, that had too much to see in one time, so that coming back was a good thing. They felt like they were revisiting some old friends, but of course there are always new things. The walkability, the ease of getting there, the the fly in and fly out, the um, just the overall feel of the destination was something they wanted to re-experience. That's great. And Jeff, I know you had had commented that you know part of your job is really listening to people like Kathy. Well, yeah, we really try and, and, and ask the right questions and try to understand from the planner what's most important and and how we can help them, you know, achieve a really successful meeting. You know, we're familiar with kind of what's new, what's changed since she was here last. Um, uh, it, you know, every destination has its own unique attributes. Right. And we want to help the, the planner be successful by by really connecting to those things that are uh, that, that fit that program, um, venues that we know will work, venues that we know will be successful. Because we look at every first time or every repeat piece of business as an opportunity to come back. Right. So you know we we really want that repeat business and and helping them connect to a genuine uh, experience that is going to create a lasting memory is just important to us at the destination uh, as it is to the planner because we know that that's going to turn around and pay dividends for us. Absolutely. So Kathy, with that in mind, then what's on your list for keeping up with what's new when you return to a destination? Well, number one, is the CVB, and if you have not used a CVB, uh, do. Um, I always say I am a self-serving woman. Anything that helps me do my job better, faster, easier, I am all for it. And your CVB person um, contact is that eyes are, are those eyes and ears that you need to know what is going on, what is new, what has happened, what changes. What is, what is still there and they will want to return to. So the CVB um, sent me magazines. So throughout the entire year of planning, I could review it, see what were the events coming up. I could ask questions. Is this something that's going to be close enough to us that we can take part in and be a part of and feel the festivities that are going on? Or is it going to be something that I need going to need to think about transportation. It was all right down in the area that we had our meeting, and so there was a lot of excitement that my attendees felt from just what was going on within the city. I never would have known that without my CVB partner, without the DMC who took a, a city tour that <clears throat> had been done before, but OK, let's have a professional photographer go this time and help the people to take pictures that will impress not only them, but everyone else who sees them. Um, so just looking at things from a little different perspective makes it a whole new experience. 
and, but yet one they, that they feel comfortable and familiar with as well. I love that idea. So you know, you're going to repeat a city tour that your destination um, marketing services person put together, but then you're going to add in another element, like that photographer. That's great. And we also talked about the the opportunity to subscribe to newspapers um, throughout the year, earmark destination sites, um, even set Google alerts in 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 um, your internet browser to you know, have keywords come up of interest to you in, in a particular destination. So all good advice. And Jeff, I know that there's an opportunity for um, those who are interested in really keeping up on meetings related news to hit your empowerment.com profile. Yeah, we use the profile to to put, you know, kind of the breaking news. Um, there's there's always things going on in any destination. There may be a hotel that's changing flags. Uh, there may be new construction. There may be a new venue, and so we try to use use uh, our landing page there as some place to kind of keep keep that information fresh. So that's just one of many tools that we use. Kathy had mentioned the magazine. We we actively. Uh, on behalf of the meeting planner, subscribe them to our local magazine. And we send that to them for a year in advance so that they know the festivals and events that will be going on during the month that they're going to be there. And there may be opportunities for pre or post or, or to get involved in those activities that are going on in the destination. So um, uh, you know, we'll post renovations. And, and uh, again, we're trying to give you every opportunity to, to kind of know what's going, what's going to be taking place uh, at the destination before you come so that there's no surprises. And hopefully, we can turn those into opportunities. Very cool. And Kathy, I'm hearing, and I feel myself, like I always want to do things that are off the beaten path. Like I want to do what the locals are doing. So how do you uncover kind of what's very unique in the destination? Well, I have to rely on the people who live there, the people who are the experts, the CVB, uh, the DMC, they are the ones who know it. And I ask the question. We not only ask the question, but we will link to their website. And the Savannah CVB created a site that would answer questions and would show people, look what you can do. Um, we did an emphasis on families coming this year and bikes that you could rent and paths that you could run. and and things that made it a complete destination. It was not just a meeting destination. That's cool. And I know that you mentioned back um, bike paths and, and rental situations. And many of the things that appeal to leisure travelers um, really are the heartbeat of what people want to do before, after, and you know sometimes even in the evenings during their meetings. So following blogs that are written by destination writers or, or keeping up with leisure travel communications can also be important. So Kathy, that kind of leads me to my next um, opportunity, which is you know theming an event. And um, you have some really good ideas of not kind of having to reinvent the wheel and kind of parlay what you're doing with your meeting um, in conjunction with what is actually available in the destination. Can you give us some insight there? Absolutely. Our registration counters, all of our brochures, our meeting final guide featured pictures of Savannah, um, both things that were historic as well as events that they could take place part in and some of the beautiful scenery that you would see. We also looked at the colors of the center. They have beautiful um, muted shades of seafoam green and purple. And we did our colors for all of our um, signage, our registration counters, everything. The colors were complementary to that so that we piggybacked on what was already there and made it a complete look rather than a look that would have been ours that we brought in. We joined 
their look and made it a complete and branded look for our attendees. You know, I think that's such a good suggestion because I know in some of the meetings that I attend, I see kind of a disconnect between the two, or I see the organization spending a lot of extra money trying to blend. And it was an easy thing to do. The pictures that a city can provide you have the opportunity to really pop your branding and become recognizable to your attendee when they come to a destination because they've already been seeing them through our collaterals throughout the year. That's cool. Now, you even mentioned verbiage, which I thought was really interesting, that you took some of the verbiage you know, that would consistently be repeated through your destination and included that in your promotion. So tell me about that. You're talking one big word, it's hospitality. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you visit Savannah, you will feel it, you will experience it, you will know it. So we used hospitality that we had found, and it carried through all of our promotional materials and through the meeting, because the people there exhibit it, from the storekeeper to the man who helps you on the ferry to the day that you leave and you're at the airport, you will experience hospitality. So we used it extensively throughout the materials. And I think everyone got the message because they felt it and got to experience it. I think that's really cool. And I think no matter which of you know the fine destinations you're visiting throughout the United States, there's opportunities to tie both the verbiage from that destination, the look and the feel of that destination into your own branding and make it a more seamless event. But what about, Kathy, not starting over every time? Because I know that you said that one of your secrets was kind of borrowing from your planner peers. How are you staying in touch with what they are doing and, and what's been done before in destinations that you're visiting? Well, I think our industry is no different from any industry, and that is we talk to our peers. We network during um, event meetings. We attend FAMS. I am a big, uh, I'm a big promoter. If you have the opportunity, don't feel like it is time out of the office. It is time well spent. Get to know the destination that you are recommending people to come to. You should know why you're recommending that they come. And it's more than just the meeting. I, I know that they come for the education, but it's, the, it's the, is the destination that has to attract them initially. So know it. Get to be a resource yourself. Um, talk to people. See what's been successful, what you can expand on, which, what you can borrow, and use it. What's been successful once will most likely be successful again. And you should know how to do that. And I thought you made a great comment when we were speaking, Kathy, when you said, you know, the more you sort of help to educate your own peers, you know, sort of what goes around comes around. So, you know, when you said be a resource yourself, you know, be sharing a lot of information about your own success stories and what worked for you and, and, and parlay off that. The, absolutely. So yeah. yeah. Jeff, go, what Jeff. was your thought there, Jeff? Well, I, I, I agree. I mean, you know, Kathy comes in, she, she, she asks the questions, and, and the DMO can be such a resource because basically we've seen it all, everything in our destination. So we have a pretty good idea of what works, what doesn't work, what's kind of marginal, and we can help steer the planner in the right direction and keep them on track to have the most successful program that they've ever had because nobody's more in, invested in the program success than the DMO. And so, you know, we want to be there. We want to make sure that everything comes off without a hitch. And uh, whatever DMO you're working with, the Destination Services Department and the salespeople are going to help you do that. And Jeff, when, when you think about really, you know, because we have all different kinds of planners um, joining us today, planners that might be what we call occasional planners. Maybe their, their title isn't even meeting planner. Maybe they're an administrative assistant or a salesperson who's planning a sales meeting for customers or clients. So for those who might not be 
so familiar with how a CBB can help. Would you speak to that for just a, uh, a minute? And then talk about your funding, too, because I often get questions about, you know, who's paying for all this assistance? Okay, sure. Uh, well, first of all, um, you'll sometimes hear that, that GMOs are free. And that's yes and no. Our services are paid for through the bed tax collection that virtually every city collects when you stay in a hotel room. So in essence, we're paid through tax collection. So our costs are covered whether you use us or not. And so since we can provide so many services and there's no additional fee for our services, uh, yeah, I, it some, sometimes surprises me that people don't take more advantage of the destination marketing organizations than they do. We can help with uh, collecting, you know, getting, collecting information from the hotels. We can have contracts or proposals sent directly to the planner, or we can collect a bundle of them and send them to you in a packet so you can review them all at the same time. Uh, when it's a multiple hotel program, we can help coordinate those efforts and and put those presentations together in one big box with a bright red ribbon on it. And so, again, we're here to help. We're here to uh, you know help you create the most successful program you've ever had, and 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 I think that's going to be the same in virtually every destination. I want to address one other, real briefly, uh, a concern that I've, I've heard from time to time from people that don't use destination marketing organizations or, or CVBs, and sometimes I'll hear that, well, I don't want my lead broad, broadcast out to the entire universe. I don't want to hear from people that I don't want to hear from, my time's too valuable, and you know, I just don't want to deal with the whole mess. Now, I will tell you that it is a, a, a standard, an industry standard, that we do not perform that function. We listen to our customers because we know that if we don't listen to you, somebody else will. We want your business. We want to connect you with the service providers that are best positioned to address your needs. And, and that's what we're here for. We don't write contracts. We don't set prices. We don't assign inventory. We're much more like the conductors of an orchestra. We stand here and we wave our hands and we try to keep everybody in the destination on the same page and in harmony so that you can have the best program you've ever had. Those are really all great points, and I think it's always good to address misconceptions and, and, and have you know, people understand how services work um, and who pays for them, how they're provided. And we really have worked, I think, hard as an industry, Jeff, I think you would agree, to really make sure that planners understand that we are in the business of helping them find the right fit for any size meeting. It doesn't have to be a citywide. Like um, Kathy's event, you don't need to use convention center space. Um, we're there to help you small or large. and that. Through DMAI, you do have an opportunity to go to a web portal that brings all the destinations in one place um, so that you can even save a, a little bit of time there as you move around to different areas that might be interested or might be interesting to you in the United States. So yeah, I know about, that, go ahead, Jeff. I was just going to say about 70% of the business we do over the course of the year fits into one hotel. Yeah, it's interesting that you should say that, Jeff, because I read recently a statistic that said 80% of meetings involve um, 100 or less participants. So we clearly know that um, you know small meetings, too, are the bread and butter of our meetings industry and can receive and should receive the same kind of detail and attention that large meetings can as well. So I know everyone will be interested. I, I really, again, Kathy, I think you had such great input about keeping things fresh. And I know that many of the planners who are on our call today either rotate to the same destinations frequently, or you know, some even never meet outside a, a, a one destination, just continuously return to a certain area of the country where their clients are located or where their own business is located. So 
keeping things fresh and driving attendance, I think, is top of mind for everyone. So um, CIC, Convention Industry Council, has given participants a half hour credit for Domain G, which is meeting or event design. And check your spam folder, because a lot of times it does get caught there, but you will see within five business days an email giving you a, a certificate for attending, and then a link to our webinar recording as well. And as we start to turn to 2015, uh, we certainly want to invite those based in the Northeast or the Washington area to visit us at our destinations showcase, too, as you're trying to figure out where you're going to take uh, future meetings. So um, I'd like to just quickly, before we take some questions, I know Elaine has been monitoring our questions, um, give Josie Wilson with ePro Direct uh, a minute to kind of just tell us a little bit about meeting apps as well. Hey, Josie. Hi, Terry. Thank you. Um, first, let me just say um, I absolutely love Savannah. <laughs> I've been there many times, so big kudos for anybody that would like to venture there. That's great. Thank you. Yes. Um, Good choice. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, I just wanted to briefly talk about ePro Direct. Um, ePro is a hospitality marketing and technology solutions firm. And basically, I just wanted to talk to you all um, quickly about our mobile app solutions and how they can help meeting event planners. Um, we have created something that's called Inspire Mobile App. It is a cost-effective meeting event association custom mobile app company. And we have multiple solutions. Um, the benefits the planners, attendees, exhibitors, and sponsors are endless. Um, we've spent many years fine-tuning um, our applications, meeting with direct meeting planners as yourselves, and compiled all the input and have created something specifically that you have asked for. Um, we have a cross-platform native application that is compatible with multiple devices, Apple, Google, Android, Windows Phone. Um, in addition to that, we are launching an HTML5 site in January. Um, all of our apps are custom built, and they target to your specific needs of your organization and your attendees. Um, we have over 30 popular modules to choose from, and then from there, we just make each one unique and specific to what it is that you would like, your branding, customizing, feature, and even we make own specific for destinations as well. So most of the time, you know, a meeting will be somewhere that's in the city that you've never been before, like Savannah. Um, so we also include things where we help you out with local area resources, dining, um, things such as that that is all provided from our company. Um, I encourage you to check out our new website at inspiremobile.com. And if you have any questions or want to arrange a discovery call or a demo with myself, free, uh, feel free to contact me at josiewilson at eprodirect.com. That's great, Josie. And uh, when we send out our meeting notes, uh, we'll make sure that everyone has your contact information as well. Certainly appreciate it. Hey, Kathy awesome. and uh, Jeff, we do have a couple questions, so I want to be able to get those out of the way. All right, Jeff, I know we did one thing that constantly confuses people, so <laughs> we need some clarification. Um, we are throwing around a lot of acronyms. So DMO, CVB, um, what is the difference, and what is, what is clear up all that. And then Kathy talked about DMCs. So how is a DMC different than a DMO? Well, Jeff, you start. <laughs> all right. <laughs> My phone just beeped, so I, I, something threw me off there. I'm sorry. Um, DMO and CVB are the same thing. DMO is just the newer terminology. And, and so we've kind of moved from that convention and visitor bureau moniker to destination marketing organization. So, um, but they're, they're, they're one and the same. Okay. And then, Kathy, you mentioned working with a DMC. What, what, how does a DMC function differently than a DMO? A destination management company is someone that I hire 
possibly to do meet and greet at the airport, um, to handle possible busing, but primarily they do our tours. They are the ones who handle spouse or companion events that happen during the time of my educational sessions. But I hire them directly. They are not part of the CBB. But they, I do use the DMO, the CBB, to get a list of people who are potentially going to be my destination management company. Okay, so I think the layers then, just for clarification, is CBBs, DMOs are, are providing resources, and then that DMC can really give you specific program um, assistance, put, put feet on the ground. Yes, and I can do it easier than that. You won't pay for a DMO. You <laughs> will pay for a DMC. All right, there you go. Perfect. And Kathy, another question that I thought was interesting was, you know, as you're leaving the industry, um, parting thoughts, um, and what about trends? What do you see in the future, and what should the planners who are keeping themselves, who don't have that I don't want to, I don't have to, I'm retired um, sign going in their office, what should they be keeping their eye on, and what do you think is most important for them to continue to educate themselves on as they move into their future? Well, I'm, I'm going to show my age here. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe highly in visiting a city that the time and effort to go to a city, see what it's like, see what happens there, what's the nightlife like if it's important to your attendee, what are the restaurants like if that's an important part of your meeting. My guys like fine wine and they like good restaurants. So are there a number of restaurants that are within easy access of the place where the meeting is going to be held? Get to know the destination that you are going to. Again, I know I said if they have a fam, do not see that it is time out of the office which is not time well spent. It is time well spent. How can you sell something you've never seen? So take the time to get to know those destinations so that you can promote it because by promoting the destination, you will also promote the meeting and you will be much more successful at both. Good advice, that sort of simpatico, not thinking about your meeting and destination promotion is separate, but thinking of them as, you know, really integral parts of the same, you know, system. I also really like your idea about just getting out because I think we all get really reliant on, you know, we think, email, you know, between email and the Internet, we can find everything we possibly will need. And things look really different in person um, sometimes yes, they than they are portrayed in, you know, primarily advertorial sites. Right, Kathy? Exactly. You're not going to get the feel of a city or a destination by viewing it on the Internet. And we all seem to be plugged into our electronics. However, that's not what you hope is going to happen at your meeting. You mm -hmm. hope people are going to take the time to enjoy and experience the destination that, that has been chosen for the meeting. Well, that's great. Um, Elaine, uh, who's been ma monitoring our question board, just um, typed in a, a little message for you, Kathy. She said, well done. She's good. <laughs> and so, you <laughs> know, we you. do. We thank you for um, giving of yourself in educating other planners how to get the most from their meetings, for advocating for the value of using a CVB. We wish you well, Kathy, in your future endeavors. Um, those of Thank us you. who've been working with Kathy knows she's about ready to sail her, her life away here. She's, she's going to join her husband in a year and a half sailing expedition. So we wish you safety and happiness as you chart those seas. And thank you for joining us today. Uh, Jeff, thank you for representing not only your great city of Savannah, but also um, the CBB industry at large. It's been a pleasure working with both of you. And I want to thank Elaine and, and Joy from our staff who've helped us and helped many of you on online today answer your questions. So everyone have a wonderful day. It was um, great having you online, and please join us in 2015. We're about to tee up a new year of webinars that will continue our learning as we all navigate the meetings industry together to have better solutions. So thanks, everyone, and really appreciate it.
Thank you, Terry, thank you. And, and thank you, Kathy, so much. Uh, we, we not only appreciate your business, but we appreciate your friendship, and uh, we look forward to seeing you back here on the sailboat. I will indeed, and I don't ever mind being made to look like a hero, and Savannah can do that for you. Oh, great, Kathy. Thank you, and thanks, Jeff. Thank, thank you. you.